The only place you need to be here on Sports Grid Pro Football today, Saturday morning. Kevin Walsh, Donnie Wright side, and Joe Lisi. Sell me something time, and in my opinion, the best one yet. Ooh, I got to say. I really? Feel, I, really? I think everyone did a great job today. Okay. <laughs> I admittedly don't know Donnie's. I'm half with mine. And I know Is Mahomes what, playing but, today? Yeah, Is I mean, he? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Look, well, Mahomes two-plus passing touchdowns. I didn't do it last week. It, come on. Right. Can we get this? Uh, but Lisi starts with an excellent no sarcasm. Excellent. Sell me something. Well, it's amazing, right? I got an A-plus from the teacher today. Uh, Devin Singletary <laughs> in regards to his receiving yards. He's got 30 receptions on the year, buck 93 in terms of his receiving yards. Last three games, Kev, four yards, two yards, six yards respectively. And he is on multiple books. The highest bet for the under, it started at 16 and a half. He's down to 14 and a half. I'm wow. going opposite way, baby, over 14 and a half receiving. Uh, Check downs for C.J. Stroud, multiple opportunities. To emphasize what Joe was saying there and why he did get an A-plus today for this pick. <laughs> this has now been, I'm sure, for those that kind of follow betting Twitter, has made the rounds, the single most bet prop in the divisional round, I don't know if you've seen this, Donnie. No. Is Devin Singletary's under 16 and a half receiving yards. Now, at least he was try- has been trying to tell me this for the last 24 hours. I yeah. had to say, I go, well, you're wrong, okay? You obviously don't know what you're talking about. It's maybe the over. I'm the always right. I'm right. always the right. Email's it makes it. no sense. Uh, Radio audience is here, by the way. Happy to have you with us across the network, including Sirius XM, Channel 159, Kevin Walsh, Donnie Wrightside, and Joe Lisi, Pro Football Today. But, Donnie, does that make any – just, just – any sense to you that the single most bet prop of the day is under Devin Singletary receiving yards? Uh, num- I mean, number one, you're taking a look at it saying, like, how is it an under? Most people are betting <laughs> overs regardless. Like, you could have a snowstorm out of it. I still think that number makes a lot of sense to go over. But, no, I don't know why you would pick this running back for an under in this situation. It, that's the yeah. un- Like, none of it is making any sense to me, right? He had three targets last week, right. three receptions, four yards. But – I, and that I understand. Right. But the idea is, first of all, an under being the most popular bet is yeah. surprising. If it was his under rushing yards, you would go, yes. oh, all right, they're a huge yep. dog, the Ravens' defense. I don't care what trends exist on Baltimore against running backs out of the, None of that matters. Yeah. The idea is, for plenty of people, the Texans will spend a chunk of this game trailing. It's not like Damian Pierce is the pass-catching back of the two. I don't know. It is truly, to me, one of the most fascinating things – that I have seen all season long from a betting perspective, and it is why Joe Lisi receives an A+. plus. I don't know if the bet will win. I'll be honest with you. I'm rooting it in. I am. I get 25-plus. Can we get this? 25-plus plus one. I think it's I think it's plus 162 or maybe maybe 230. 230, I think, is the bet. Uh, all right, DRS, what do you got for us? Yeah, let's alt this one up. Lisi, you got to love this one. Coming in hot and ready from San Francisco today. You know what it's going to be? It's Aaron Jones to lead this football game in rushing and receiving Ooh. at a plus 320 number Whoa. here. Now, what's everybody going to look forward to? Well, it's Christian McCaffrey. He's going to have, you know, 100 yards on the ground, 40 yards receiving at this point. If you take a look at Aaron Jones' game, last four combined, 131, 141, 130, and 135. If you think the Green Bay Packers have a chance to win this football game and you tell me that Aaron Jones is going to have a combined, like, 70 yards today, you're doing it wrong. He needs a big day. So if you think Green Bay is going to win, it's going to have to be on Aaron Jones and maybe takes out of the backfield that 20, 25-yard screen pass, and away you go. And also we talked about if it's a slippery surface, he's got gas. He can run right by you, one foot in the ground, and he's gone. Juicy. I love it. I love it, Donnie, because last four games he's averaged 119 uh, rushing yards on the ground, had one reception for about 12 yards, 13 yards in last week against Mm -hmm. Dallas. They never went back to him in terms of the screen game. I think LaFleur is keeping it for this game because when you have an overactive defense, you get them running and sideline to sideline, get Aaron Jones out in space. So That's how they attack today. CMC is the favorite. It, yeah. Jones is the second option. Jones is the second option, followed by Debo Samuel. I I gonna, but Debo can't be like far five to one. Behind, yes, right? it's like five to one. Yeah, man, that is a that's a I really like fun that. market. I actually yeah. last night. I know this is would not qualify in this segment. Nico Collins is, I think, minus one twenty to lead Ravens Texans in receiving yards. Mm-hmm. Look. Could a guy break out, have a crazy long catch and change? Yes, yeah. 100%. But Nico's prop is 80 and a half. Next closest is Zay Flowers and somewhere in what? The 50s, 60s? It gives you an idea. So mine is 70 to 1. 
which Ooh, whoa. I think uh, the kid qualifies. broke the bank. Man. I also think that you will both like this for very different reasons. Donnie appreciates odds. Lisi probably just thinks this is going to be a winning bet because of what he believes in. Each game in the divisional round to feature one quarterback rushing touchdown is 70 to 1. Here's the easy portion to sell. Yeah. Lamar has the shortest price to score a touchdown game in game one. Josh Allen has the shortest price to score a touchdown in game number two. So the question is, now there's no guarantee those guys hit, but allow me, can I get a quarterback sneak between Love, Purdy, and then Baker and Goff? I think I can. And at 70-1, to 1, Joe, I thought it was worth a shot. You sold me. I, I'm going to put it out because <laughs> I'm in on Jordan Love at 11 to one to score are. a touchdown today. The one thing is, in terms of that ball game, they play man-to-man coverage, running yep. lanes. His total today is eight and a half down from nine and a half. So I like Love. How about Pat Mahomes too? Doesn't have to be Josh Allen. Could be Pat Mahomes that rushed for 41 yards last week. So great looks in regards to that. I'll put it in in the break. The best part about this bet is you get Lamar Jackson right off the bat yeah. to sort of get that cheering going, and how terrible would it be if game number one doesn't get it and it's Lamar Jackson and the next three games do get it that would just be painful but I love the fact that you don't have to be like oh well I need Baker Mayfield to get it first game no no. Lamar Jackson scores first quarter you're feeling those vibes right Uh, absolutely so Uh, I also did take a couple other things that would have qualified here so each team for a passing touchdown is plus 170 Mm -hmm. I didn't bet that 50 to 1 for each team to get a rushing I, touchdown. It shouldn't be that. That it, is not it, it the appropriate gap. It, it throws me off. I, 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 not in any. Compa- look at the, for, for, so it's each team, each game. Yes. But still, but not the tough one team, is what? Houston, I guess you would say. Yeah. If that's the tough yes. one. Because, yeah. Sure. I, I understand that. Or but maybe it's Green Bay. They don't think Green Bay could get in because of San yeah, Francisco. Does, I mean, last, oh, last no, week, I know. Three last I know. Week before he that, he'd struggle. I'm just yeah. saying. Again, like the price that Josh is, the Ravens yep. are Lamar and Gus, the Chiefs, Pacheco, right? Obviously. Take them both. He sold me guy. on everything here. I, a, and then the other one that I took, I think it was 20 to 1 or 22 to 1. I think twenty. I think it was 20 to 1. But each quarterback. Uh, this weekend to complete 20 passes. Every single quarterback prop of completions is 20 and a half or higher other than Lamar, who's at 18 and a half. So, yes, this very well could blow up game one, but that's one of those things where, you know, I like to do this, Don, at these yeah. specials. Like, all right, let me put these in the parlay. Parlay them, them all together. You. What's the parlay all together? Yeah, I don't, one dollar wins a million? I, 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 I couldn't it? figure <laughs> it out, but each quarterback for 20-plus completions uh, is 20 to 1. Took a couple uh, long shots for the divisional round. We've got eight really good quarterbacks playing, uh, and odds are one of these quarterbacks will win Super Bowl MVP. Mm. We'll break it down for you all here on Sports Grid Live Pro Football Today. Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some dog prices. We're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Kev. Go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now, he's a little bit more over money, but it's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division. Four. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby. The money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. The Bostonian versus the book. This is one of the hardest jobs in all of football. You are replacing Bear Bryant. You are replacing Nick Saban. You are replacing guys who won national championships, and they still wanted them out. They still wanted them gone. Mike Shula. Mike Shula was a disaster. Dubos was a disaster. Gene Stallings. That's what I mean. They they ran him out. He won a national championship, and they ran Gene Stallings out. The Bostonian versus the book. 
by the Clippers, and obviously, folks, they have Tyron Lue, who I think is one of the best coaches in the league. And I'll say this right now, folks, the way they're playing, I know Minnesota's in first. I know Oklahoma City's been great. I know Denver's been fantastic. But the team I'm thinking right now that could actually come out of the West, if they stay healthy and he keeps playing like that, it's Kawhi Leonard and the Clippers. Betting above the rim, only on Sports Grid. Last year, the Purdue Boilermakers upset by the 16 seed Fairleigh Dickinson. Is history going to repeat itself? Purdue is capable of winning six games in the NCAA tournament, but the fact is, until Purdue proves that it's capable of not just advancing, but advancing far in the bracket in March, this is going to be the storyline, and I've said that to you throughout the offseason. The early line, only on Sports Grid. I am not a Cowboys fan. I did not have a Cowboys ticket on this game. I bet the over, but I was, I'm frustrated watching this game. I'm frustrated seeing the Dallas Cowboys think that this is their optimal game plan. In game live, prime time, only on Sports Grid. Sports Grid, the only streaming sports betting network. Tips, info, and insights to up your IQ. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Live on Sports Grid. It's Pro Football Today. Kevin Walsh, Donnie Wright side, and Joe Lisi with you on a Saturday morning. And before the games kick off for the weekend, I wanted to take an opportunity to look at the Super Bowl MVP market. And in a lot of ways, the quarterback prices are just a touch better than the outright market. The best example of this is the Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes. The Chiefs are seven to one to win the Super Bowl. Mahomes is eight to one to win Super Bowl MVP. Is that dollar really worth it? That's why, because there's some guys I'm curious where you guys would land, but I want to start the conversation with Brock Purdy. At the moment, the Niners are plus 175 to win the Super Bowl. Brock Purdy is plus 370. A massive gap relative to all of these other quarterbacks when, I mean, again, like the Texans are 33 to 1 to win the Super Bowl. CJ Stroud's 34 to 1. The idea is if it's going to be CJ, it's going to be the Texans, right? The. Brock Purdy more than double the number is something that I played prior to Wild Card Weekend at plus 450. It has since come down to plus 370. The MO is still the same. For me, I understand Caffrey, Debo, Kittle, Ayuk, Fred Warner, Nick Bosa. There's a gazillion guys. I, I get that. But Super Bowl MVP, Donnie, typically still goes to the quarterback. And I thought that Brock Purdy presented a lot of value and to a degree still does at his price. I'm glad you said that because if you take a look at the first four, Lamar Jackson plus 330, Brock Purdy plus 370, Josh Allen 6-1, to one, Mahomes 8-1. to one. You know the one guy who I'm not betting? It's Brock Purdy at plus 370. Go ahead. Because if I look at this market and try to evaluate it, I say to myself, if the Ravens win the Super Bowl, Gus had 35 carries, 276 yards and three touchdowns. All right, I'll live with it. Mark Andrews catches three touchdowns, but also who threw him the ball three times there. Let's just go to Josh Allen. The Buffalo Bills win the Super Bowl. It's all James Cook. No. If you take a look at Patrick Mahomes, hey, the Chiefs won the Super Bowl. Hey, Mahomes didn't play all that well, and they still won. Not the case here. I can see Brock Purdy winning the Super Bowl, but not playing a fantastic game because of how good that defense is and how many weapons they have, which includes Christian McCaffrey. And that's not saying I'm taking McCaffrey at plus 850, but of those top four guys here that I'm looking at quarterback-wise with a legitimate chance for me to win a Super Bowl, Brock Purdy would not get my vote here. No, I agree, because he's looked at and all season long looked at as a game manager to some degree by some people, right? And again, when we're talking about MVP, whether it be a big game, college game, it all comes down to perception. They perceive Brock Purdy to be not as elite as Pat Mahomes, Josh Allen, and Lamar Jackson in regards to that. It's more of a system. It's Kyle Shanahan. So, uh, you know, I probably, if you're looking at those quarterbacks, I probably not look at Purdy in any capacity. Again, I would probably look at McCaffrey before I look at Purdy in that regard because if McCaffrey goes off 100 yards, three touchdowns, he'll I think he'll get the nod over his quarterback. So, you know, this is where 
I bet Brock Purdy, and of course I'm going to be able to back it up. Because people will use the Ravens game. We can't bet Brock. They lost the game. It doesn't matter. They lost the game. It does not matter. Brock Purdy and wins this season. 28 touchdowns to two picks. In their games against playoff teams, plus I added Jacksonville, who at the time felt like a step-up spot, that's five games. And four out of them, Brock threw three-plus passing touchdowns. CMC in wins this year has 15 total touchdowns and 135 and a half total yards per game. I'm not saying it's not excellent. That's in 12 wins. But it's not 28 to 2 touchdown interception ratio. Go find 10. Tell me how many times this year the Niners won and Brock Purdy was not excellent. That's what we have to remember. The idea when we get to the Super Bowl and you inevitably pick against Brock Purdy and you inevitably pick against Brock, that's fine. But I'm talking about if the Niners win and where the value sits because. Yes, Donnie, if the Chiefs are going to win the Super Bowl, Mahomes is yes. probably going to play wait, yes. play great. But is it really worth going from 7-1 to one to 8-1 to one on the Chiefs to win the Super Bowl to Mahomes to win Super Bowl MVP? But, but here's the layout, though, because, again, perception sometimes can be reality in these situations. And when you're taking a look at a football team, let's just say it's even out there, right? When I say, like, when I mean even, like statistics, ooh, you know what? Defensive line guy had a really good game this week. Wide receiver had a good Tight end, running. You see where I'm going with this? Sure. Hey, Lamar Jackson's that superstar name. He gets the MVP. He's a two-time MVP. That's his award. Similar to the way we look at Patrick Mahomes, where maybe he doesn't have the best Super Bowl, he would win it. But if Brock Purdy's in that same conversation, let's just say Debo had 90 yards and a touchdown, McCaffrey a buck 10 and a touchdown, Brock Purdy 275 and two scores, I'm not so sure Brock Purdy's actually getting that award here. That's what the basis of the analysis is. When the same thing with Josh Allen, hey, Diggs had 176 yards and two scores. Well, Mahomes threw him that, or excuse me, uh, Josh Allen threw him that, I'm going to give it to Josh Allen, right. probably. And, and think about the, the secondary players, right? Outside, we're, we're, let's just take Kansas City. Uh, you think they're going to give it to Rasheed Rice? <laughs> if he, you know, the only person that they would give it uh, in terms of the, the MVP would be Travis Kelsey. If he goes off for 200 yards and, and two touchdowns. You know, he's that recognizable yeah. brand name. Same thing with Buffalo. Stephon Diggs, okay, he goes off for a buck sixty-five, but Josh Allen, you know, throws for three hundred and rushes for fifty. He's getting that. They're not going to give it to James Cook in regards to that. Totally. All right. I, I, so I, hold on. But this is the thing, because again, like I, I can. And, and here's it. Let hold me on. just say, you think they're going to give it to like a player like Isaiah Likely or Gus Edwards on Baltimore? So the world where, with the way Lamar's play this year, like Gus Edwards has a three-touchdown game in the Super Bowl, wouldn't not surprise me a bit. Well, I'll tell you this right now. If Gus Edwards rushes in three, <laughs> they're going to give it to Gus Edwards. But let me just, hold on. Know, maybe Gus hands it back over to Lamar. Hold on. Yeah, but but let me just say this. This year, when they played Dallas, right, Josh Allen had 94 passing yards, a rushing score, and 24 rushing yards. Right. James Cook had a buck 79 right. on the ground. And guess what? Ru- I guess Josh Allen would be like this. Hang on. Holding up wait, the Super Bowl wait, not like only that, you so know, don't be wait, stupid. Hang on. In that game, I'm glad you brought that game up. You know who got the game ball by Sean McDermott in that game? Josh Allen, not oh, James Cook. All right, let me tell you this. That guy's a wheel, okay? <laughs> that guy's a – hold on. What? Hold on, hold on. Oh, oh no, no, no. He's got a lot of – I just want to – hold on. <laughs> let me just be, let me just hang be on. clear. Hold on. I'm just, just saying go back to the tape. No, no, I just want to be clear. Sean McDermott gave the game ball to Josh Allen. 220 yards of offense, two touchdowns for James Cook. Right. Josh Allen threw for 94 I am, yards. I no, 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 no. Who do you think would have won Super Bowl MVP if they gave it out at the end of the Dallas game? In that regard, I, I, I mean, I think you're honestly, I think you're both completely out of your mind. Quite frankly, I mean, I, I'm not even sure that. I'm, you, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Yeah. Uh, say uh, the LA Rams beat Cincinnati. Cooper Cup was supposed to be in the MVP. Right. Somehow, right? And, and they gave it to Stafford. No, they didn't. They gave it to Cooper Cup. Oh, uh, there you go. Yeah. Wheel. I mean, total wheel. Right. <laughs> I mean, you know, look, I don't, the game against the Chiefs, you went out there and got 233 yards from Josh Allen. He threw a touchdown. He ran a touchdown. He had a pick. James Cook in that game ran for 58, it, caught 83, and had a score. But James Cook is not the face of the Buffalo yep. Bills. That's here, what it comes down gotta, to. Here's how to go. Look, championship NBA, Anthony Davis averaged 31 points in the finals. LeBron, 24 points in the finals. LeBron, MVP. So this is again. I can't. You're going to get it. You're going to get it. You're going to get it. Me set. teaching you guys yeah. how this works. Yeah. But so, so then, why are we betting it? What are you talking about? Because why it's already it's, it's already over. <laughs> no, that's what <laughs> you're saying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that's what you're saying, right? I mean, First why of all, even watch the game? Why the NBA the Finals games? is over seven games. A seven game series. It is a one game. San- Julian Edelman took a, took a Super Bowl MVP off Tom Brady. Von Miller has a Super Bowl MVP. Malcolm Smith has a Super Bowl MVP. This is all apparently news to the two of you. If Brock Purdy throws for 303 touchdowns, 
right? And, and McCaffrey has 80 yards. He's going to win it in that type of situation. McCaffrey has 175 all-purpose yards and three total touchdowns. And, and yes, what Joe, we're saying, if it's you're just, right. If, it's just if McCaffrey comp- the catch- comparisons are the same, Brock Purdy is going to get left out. Lamar, Josh Allen, I don't Patrick think Mahomes, that's true. That's the but angle. That's what I'm we're saying. Think, I don't think that's true. All right, so we disagree. It's po- that's uh, why. That's what, why. One hundred percent. That that's fine. To agree. But I don't even care about that anymore. You two buffoons just told me that wow. if James Cook has 220 yards of offense and People two touchdowns, they're, 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 they're going to give it to Josh Allen. Who's who's even even no, dreams, though. I'm like using complete... one of four big da- Buffalo games that happened in the regular season. Okay, but what, what is Josh Allen? All right, you, you're just using re, uh, passing yards. What does he do on the ground? He had 24. In that game, he had 24 rushing okay. yards and a rushing touchdown. All right. So you're not interested in any skill position players. I, I would so, be. So to I be would clear. Be a player like OBJ, somebody that has the, the name recognition. James Cook doesn't. James Cook doesn't. But So how did Malcolm Smith win a Super Bowl MVP? I'll teach Got these lucky. guys more about the history of the Super Bowl during break. We'll be right back here on Pro Football today. Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some dog prices. And we're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Ken. Go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now, he's a little bit more over money, but it's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division. Third. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby. The money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. The Bostonian versus the Buck. This is one of the hardest jobs in all of football. You are replacing Bear Bryant. You are replacing Nick Saban. You are replacing guys who won national championships and they still wanted them out. They still Mike, wanted them gone. Mike Shula. You, you Mike Shula was him? a disaster. Dubos was a disaster. Gene Stallings. That's what I mean. They, they ran him out. He won a national championship and they ran Gene Stallings out. The Bostonian versus the Buck. Good move by the Clippers and obviously folks, they have Tyron Lou, who I think is one of the best coaches in the league. And I'll say this right now, folks, the way they're playing, I know Minnesota's in first. I know Oklahoma City's been great. I know Denver's been fantastic. But the team I'm thinking right now that could actually come out of the West, if they stay healthy and he keeps playing like that, it's Kawhi Leonard and the Clippers. Betting above the rim, only on Sports Grid. Last year, the Purdue Boilermakers upset by the 16 seed Fairly Dickinson. Is history going to repeat itself? Purdue is capable of winning six games in the NCAA tournament, but the fact is, until Purdue proves that it's capable of not just advancing, but advancing far in the bracket in March, this is going to be the storyline, and I've said that to you throughout the offseason. The early line, only on Sports Grid. I am not a Cowboys fan. I did not have a Cowboys ticket on this game. I bet the over, but I was, I'm frustrated watching this game. I'm frustrated seeing the Dallas Cowboys think that this is their optimal game plan. In game live, prime time, only on Sports Grid. Sports Grid, the only streaming sports betting network. Tips, info, and insights to up your IQ. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Back on Sports Group, it's pro football today here on a Saturday morning. Kevin Walsh, Donnie Wrightside, 
and Joe Lisi now joined by Jason Locke and Fora. Jason, thanks for joining us here ahead of the divisional round of the NFL playoffs. Hey, thanks for having me. Should be a wild weekend here. Yeah, excited to, to get into it. It all begins uh, to some degree in your backyard with Baltimore oh, yeah. uh, and Houston. And the Ravens are a nine and a half point favorite, a dropping total down to 43 and a half. What do you expect from Lamar Jackson and CJ Stroud today? I think they both do the job. Um, I think Lamar Jackson in particular is is priced really low. I mean, this almost feels like uh, some of his yardage props were set based on the old Greg Roman offense, you know, which was run, 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 throw when you had to. Uh, but this team is throwing the ball on first down, uh, top six in the NFL and just attempts from week 10 to week 17, right? Lamar didn't play week 18. Remember that meaningless game against Pittsburgh. You're talking about Lamar Jackson being a top two quarterback, throwing the ball on first down in that span. You're talking about over 10 air yards per attempt, throwing the ball downfield. You're talking about Lamar Jackson the last month of the season led the NFL in first down play action passing dropbacks uh, with 51, and he's been incredibly adept at it. So, look, this to me is an over game. Um, again, I was just outside. I'm 10 miles from the stadium. <laughs> Things could change between now and 4.15. Oh, careful. But, Uh-oh. like, it's cold. Will the wind become this, like, epidemic persistent thing? I, I-, I guess it's possible. It's not expected. Um, and I do expect Lamar Jackson to be chucking the ball all over the place. If you look at the Ravens this season at home, decidedly over right that the the average close was under 43 points the average actual game total 50 that plus seven differential fifth highest at home in the nfl vegas had difficulty placing this if you go back over what they've done at home against playoff teams they're all way over this total um the only one that didn't you know get there and i know like like seattle ended up not being a playoff team but like just look at their home scoring total that one didn't get there at 40. Baltimore scored 37. Seattle scored three. Houston's scoring more than three here today. Both these secondaries, particularly Houston's, I think you can find joy against. 27th in the league in yards allowed against per attempt. And go back to the Miami game. First play of the game, Baltimore Ravens get under center. First down, play action, deep shot to Rashad Bateman. Should have caught it, but... They still ended up carving up Miami on first down. They carved up San Francisco throwing on first down. I think they're going to carve this defense up throwing on first down. I love the over. I love Lamar Jackson plus 275 and above in all markets. I love Odell Beckham to go over 18 and a half longest reception. Zay Flowers, you get plus money over four and a half receptions. I like that. Isaiah Likely, he'll get his too. And Stroud, yeah, they're going to hang tough. They'll put up their 21 or 24. Schultz is the guy to watch, though. Houston, a derivative, right, of San Francisco. The staff all came from there. Go watch what Kittle did to this defense. Go watch Miami, derivative of San Francisco. Coach came from there. Go watch what Dorm Smythe did to this defense. Go watch what Gerald Everett did to this defense. Like, go watch what every tight end's done against this defense since the middle of the year. Schultz in the low 30s, I'm way over that. Should be a fun game, certainly, to watch that one play out. And Lamar Jackson, last time we saw him, those last two games with versus the 49ers and also versus the Miami Dolphins, solidifying his MVP stature in 2023. Jason, let's go out to the West Coast tonight here. The Green Bay Packers, who blasted the Dallas Cowboys last night or last week, going to take on the San Francisco 49ers. A total list in this game at 50 and a half. Some rain now appearing in the forecast, but tens now across the board. Is this a blow in San Francisco, or can we see a repeat of what we saw last week out of the Green Bay Packers? I don't think we're going to see a repeat, um, but I hope you guys, I hope I convinced you to sprinkle with me on the uh, Packers last week. I uh, made a lot of money on mm. that, uh, on the Packers money line. Uh, I'm not playing it that way here, though. I, when this opened early in the week, did a lot of research, I took that 10. That 10 is now back. I would take that 10 again. Um, if you look at how Green Bay attacks teams, you look at what Jordan Love's done on the road, and I know San Francisco's got a great defense, and I know Armstead's back, but Armstead better be all the way back. Because the final month of the season, you could run the ball up the gut on San Francisco all day long, allowing over five yards of carry. Bottom five in the league in EPA, defending the runs up the middle. You could run off right tackle all day long. And guess what? Since Aaron Jones got back there, they're getting six yards of carry running to the right side. You're looking at a San Francisco team that was allowing, again, over five yards of carry to the right side. 
I love the starting corners for San Francisco. I don't love their nickel personnel. And again, Jordan Love threw for over 2,000 yards this year on the road. Jordan Road Jordan Love has the most 22 passing touchdowns in the NFL on the road. And yeah, this will be hostile, but I don't think LaFleur is here just to kind of keep it close. I think he's going to ride this young man, and he's going to have more than the 21 attempts last week because it's going to be a different game script. Aaron Jones will get into the, I think he'll rush for over 80 yards. I'm playing him in alt markets, 80 and above rushing the ball. Jordan Love will find chunk yards against these guys. Jordan Love throws for his two touchdowns. And yes, I think Green Bay keeps this within two scores. And I think it's an over game. I mean, I Brock Purdy to, to, to George Kittle all day long. Uh, Kittle priced in the low 50s. I can't figure it out. He averages five catches for about 87 yards per game at home with almost a touchdown per game. He'll feature in this early game script. No doubt in my mind, we've seen that Green Bay can't defend tight ends. I like tight end props across the board, guys. I would dabble in a $5 anytime. I'm sorry, first touchdown prop pairing a lot of these guys. Likely Kittle. I, I think it's worth a, a look-see here. And Kittle, I believe, goes off in this game. Jason, turn our attention to Detroit and Tampa Bay tomorrow. Detroit is six and a half point favorite. Baker Mayfield and the Bucks get a dominating 32 to 9 win over the Eagles. Now we're seeing 49 and a halfs popping up, up from 48 and a half. How do you see this game playing out tomorrow afternoon? Look, I was hoping it would get down to 48 because these aren't the sexiest quarterbacks in the world. It didn't. I played it a lot at 48 and a half. At 49 and a half, Obviously, I don't love it as much, but I still think this is an over game. Um, I think both these teams get to 24. I don't think Tampa's out to prove they can run the ball. Like, they've got a young coordinator there in Dave Canales. He's trying to get head coaching jobs. He's turned Baker Mayfield around, and Baker Mayfield has reverse splits. He's better on the road than home, right? 19 touchdowns on the road. Only Jordan Love, who I just mentioned, has more. The ball could go anywhere, and this is a Lions secondary that can't defend the slot, and Tampa Bay has five different guys who I think all in any particular matchup, as long as they're not against Branch, could do the job in the slot. Um, I like Baker to throw over one and a half touchdown passes in this game. I think that the Bucs can get to 24. I think the Lions get to 24. What Jared Goff did outdoors against the Bucs, maybe his best outdoor passing performance since he became a dome quarterback with the Lions. I think a lot of that will hold true again today against this Bucs secondary. So, I'm on Rob St. Brown. I I think he goes over 100 pretty much every game at home. I think he's going over 100 here again. And I just expect points here, guys. The the line is a little too too rich for me. I think it's probably more like a three-point game, but I still have trouble backing the Bucs. So I'm on the over. Uh, All right, Jason, let's finish it out with a big one in Buffalo. The Bills are a a two-and-a-half-point favorite against the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, Feels a little now or never for Buffalo in this matchup against Mahomes what do you see here well I like the under more than anything else in this game these two obviously played an under game uh, a few weeks back decidedly under right 2017 and Pacheco did not play in that game Pacheco is going to shatter his uh the 14 and a half maybe it's up to 15 and a half I played it at 14 and a half wherever it is Pacheco is going to run the ball 20 times today uh tomorrow I should say and you're looking at a Buffalo team over 52 percent of the time rushing the football since they made the coordinator change more than Pittsburgh, more than Baltimore, more than anybody. And that's not going to change against this Steve Spagnuolo defense. I think both these teams want to run the ball into the other underbelly of the other team's defense. Josh Allen, they're still giving you plus money on any time touchdown. I'm all over that. Josh Allen's going to run way over 50 yards in this game. I think he's going to be much closer to the 70 from uh, a week ago against Pittsburgh. I think it's a snug game all the way through. The Chiefs' red zone failures, I don't really think they're fixed, right? They're a funnel. The ball goes to Kelsey or Rice through the air, and otherwise it's Pacheco. Makes them kind of easy to defend. I don't think that changes on the road uh, this weekend against a a pretty stout Buffalo defense. The injuries to the Buffalo secondary, the one thing I don't love about the under, but I I still think this is a field goal game, and I think it's played in the low 20s. Give me the under. Jason, take a look at the four games this weekend. Let's have some fun with this one. If there is going to be an upset, who's going to pull that upset this weekend if we remove Kansas City? I was going to say, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'll say the Packers. I'll, I'll, I'll say the – and I haven't bet it, but I, I don't see Baltimore losing at home. Um, 
I mean, even uh, Tampa, I guess, would count. But I think the Packers are in this thing, guys. I, I think this game is is close late. Uh, the home team probably wins, but the longer Green Bay hangs in it. And again, this is one I'll be looking at halftime, perhaps on the money line for Green Bay if if if, if they do weather the storm early. I got to see Armstead. Like, I'm, in these games, there's a few things I'm looking for. And what does that run defense look like early downs right away for San Francisco? Because we know what Green Bay can do under center play action. And if they establish the run early, there's going to be deep shots. And just give me the points, 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 points. Uh, I'm really interested if Green Bay wins the kick, I think they'll again take the football. Yep. Do the Niners also take the football to not allow Green Bay to start with it? Uh, it'll be interesting. Jason, we appreciate it a ton. Best of luck with all the games this weekend. Thanks, guys. All right, great stuff there from Jason Lock and Four. Coming up next here on Pro Football Today, we dive into the playoff leader markets where some stuff is expected. Remaining quarterbacks favor to lead the NFL in passing yards? Sure. How about eliminated tight ends leading the postseason and receiving touchdowns? We'll break it down next right here on Sports. Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some dog prices. And we're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Kev. Go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now, he's a little bit more over money, but it's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division. Third. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby. The money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. The Bostonian versus the book. This is one of the hardest jobs in all of football. You are replacing Bear Bryant. You are replacing Nick Saban. You are replacing guys who won national championships and they still wanted them out. They still Mike, wanted them gone. Mike Shula. You Mike Shula was him? a disaster. Dubos was a disaster. Gene Stallings. That's what I mean. They, they ran him out. He won a national championship and they ran Gene Stallings out. The Bostonian versus the book. Good move by the Clippers, and obviously, folks, they have Tyron Lou, who I think is one of the best coaches in the league. And I'll say this right now, folks, the way they're playing, I know Minnesota's in first. I know Columbus City's been great. I know Denver's been fantastic. But the team I'm thinking right now that could actually come out of the West, if they stay healthy, and he keeps playing like that, it's Kawhi Leonard and the Clippers. Betting above the rim, only on Sports Grid. Last year, the Purdue Boilermakers upset by the 16 seed Fairley Dickinson. Is history going to repeat itself? Purdue is capable of winning six games in the NCAA tournament, but the fact is, until Purdue proves that it's capable of not just advancing, but advancing far in the bracket in March, this is going to be the storyline, and I've said that to you throughout the offseason. The early line, only on Sports Grid. I am not a Cowboys fan. I did not have a Cowboys ticket on this game. I bet the over, but I was, I'm frustrated watching this game. I'm frustrated seeing the Dallas Cowboys think that this is their optimal game plan. In game live, prime time, only on Sports Grid. Sports Grid, the only streaming sports betting network. Tips, info, and insights to up your IQ. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid.
Back right here at Pro Football today. We're going to do playoff leaders in a moment, but I do want to give you both an opportunity to just let me know the Super Bowl MVP shots that you guys <laughs> yeah. did want to give the people. Yeah. I, well, if we're talking deep shots, i like Green Bay to potentially win the NFC Championship. I would have given a, a shot on Jordan Love, 34-1 to 1 to be that choice. I think he's got great value. I think if you're going to look the Ravens in terms of the AFC outside of Lamar, the only recognizable potential name is OBJ. And the reason why I say that is because he did step up in the previous Super Bowl with the L.A. Rams and was in a position to potentially be there with Cooper Cup. So I would look at a player like OBJ if we're talking deep shots. I mean, if we're talking complete deep shots, I like C.J. Stroud as well because I think the Texans have an opportunity to knock off the Ravens tonight. Simple for me. If I'm just not going to say, you know what, I want plus 300, plus 400 in that range, it would be Mahomes 8-1. to 7-1 to one for Kansas City to win the Super Bowl. 8-1 to one for Mahomes. There's no way this, they're going to win the Super Bowl and not give it to Patrick Mahomes. 8-1 to one price for me. I think what's been interesting for the Chiefs, though, this year is just how non-high-flying the offense has been. Like, in years past, that was – and, of course, he's already won multiple Super yeah. Bowl uh, MVPs this year. But this iteration of the Chiefs winning an ugly game where Pacheco goes wild, it wouldn't completely stun me. Where in years past, you could never see a route, right? Like, so it's interesting, but in years past, you had Tyreek and Kelsey at yeah. the peak of their powers. Where, like, could they have excellent enough games? But the world where the Chiefs win a Super Bowl final score 2017 – and then you ask yourself, did some defensive player have a wild game? Did Pacheco potentially run for 100 and a score? That's what worries me about that Mahomes price. And the thing with Love and Stroud, again, those are isolated big prices, right? But if you offered me Jordan Love at 34 to 1 or Aaron Jones at 260 to 1, I'm betting Aaron Jones at 260 to 1. Oh, you're talking about a Christian McCaffrey type of player. Again, you know, that's a player that is a five-tool type of running back. So, you you have the potential. I mean, we could do this in terms of any Super Bowl. Pick a deep shot, you know, outside the quarterbacks and and have it. If we're talking Kansas City, the only player I potentially would bet would be Travis Kelsey. Because of the brand recognition, and I understand there's been under-the-radar guys. I get that. I understand that. However, if we're talking, you know, perception, the the media goes to players that they are relatable to, recognizable names. Kelsey has that name if he breaks out for 175 receiving yards, three touchdowns, and Taylor Swift is in the audience they, they, there is an opportunity to give it to, to Kelsey over Mahomes in terms of that situation. Well, so just to back up that point is what, let's just say Mahomes somehow gets injured in the second quarter and it's even statistics between Kelsey and Isaiah Pacheco. We know who's going to get that. Probably lean towards Kelsey at that point. That's all. It's just name that, recognition that, when everything about. is even. It's perception. I, I mean, I often think it's just who, again, plays excellent in the game more so than you're, 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 but whatever, you're, they all play excellent then. That's well, the I don't argument. know. Again, like Malcolm Smith, who nobody knows who that is, has a Super Bowl MVP. But he, he You don't re- think they could have found other guys on that Seattle Seahawks team to give it to? I mean, I've, I haven't looked at the stats, and I'm sure there's outliers there. But just heading into this playoff run, well, if everything is even, what I, would I was also, saying that Brock Purdy that would, that might not your, win that, it, where that, I think the other one Malcolm was. Smith, yes. For, uh, for me, the only thing is betting Super Bowl MVP – when we get, like, we'll all be out in Vegas, right? The lead, week leading up, and we'll have the game set, right? Yeah. Right. And the numbers are going to look so different. So the thing about my Brock Purdy thing, right, whether you guys think the Niners are going to be there or not, but let's, what is Brock Purdy's price going to be if the Niners are in the Super Bowl to win Super Bowl MVP? Probably plus 125, right. give or take, okay. yes. right? I would so, agree with that. And what's McCaffrey, plus 150? No, I think it would because uh, because McCaffrey's more than double Brock right now. All right, so I actually think you'd be getting around three to one, uh, maybe okay. even a little bit more on on CMC. My thing is take Kelsey and let's just take Kelsey and let's take Aaron Jones. Yeah, if those teams get there, Kelsey right now is a hundred and thirty to one. Big I'd up. rather bet that now than the Mahomes eight, just because I bet if you really like the Mahomes, I'd rather just bet the Chiefs Super Bowl at seven to one. Like, there's not enough of a gap there for No, I, me. I, I know, but the, the question is posed as who would you take as MVP? Because you're right. I'm not taking anybody, actually, in betting an MVP. I'm going to take the team itself because I don't want to be left at the ultimate. Like, yeah, what a great thought. Right. Like, no, my guy didn't win it. Now I don't win right. any money. So, so but that's a, the, it, it, it's a secondary bet for me, yeah. and Donnie's right. Like, if you, if you, view, you, you view San Francisco, right? Mm-hmm. For me, I would just bet San Francisco to win the Super Bowl. And then as a, as, a, as a secondary option, bet Purdy to potentially win the MVP. That can't be my main bet because it comes down to, like Donnie said, Purdy could play lights out 
But then if he if McCaffrey duplicates that type of productivity, I oh. could lose out from perception. It's not. It's not. It, and this is we, this bet, and we always talk about this. It, it, there is no clear cut. It's not an end game. Meaning, Kansas City wins the Super Bowl. That's it. You book the bet. You win. Kansas City wins the Super Bowl, and Pat Mahomes and Travis Kelsey has have huge games. You're you're left there waiting. Does the media see it the way I do? Yeah. And that's where you're on the outside looking in. The the thing for me and why Purdy, which was, again, a week ago, plus 450, though. It's th- a good bet. I'm not saying it's not. And why I'd rather bet that than the Niners to win the Super Bowl. Like, And just take it for what it is right now. The Niners to win the Super Bowl is plus 175, right? There's no work to be done off that number. Right, this is something that you and I have talked about a lot. Yeah. Where you know you bet the Steelers to win the Super Bowl at zero point, thought they could win the Super Bowl. Let's get to the Correct. playoffs and we can figure it out. Yes. Right. Brock Purdy, believe it or not, but at plus four fifty and even still two degree at plus three seventy. If they get to the game, you can still do work off of that number because when you get to the Super Bowl, they hang the market quarterback versus non quarterback to win Super Bowl MVP, and that quarterback position is usually about minus three hundred. Because the idea is it's going to a quarterback this side or the next. Yeah. So the Niners at plus 175, and you're getting triple the number on their starting quarterback. That Again, that is why the Brock Purdy number is so fascinating. Because at the end of the day, Super Bowl MVP, like regular season MVP, but not as much, is still a quarterback award. Well, then, uh, yes, I get it. I, I mean, if you're talking double the money, I would just bet double the money on San Francisco and I cover all I cover <laughs> cover all angles. I mean, that's what I'm just saying. I, I mean, because then I got offense, I got defense, I know they're the better team, and, and I don't have to worry until the – it, it just drives me nuts, per, personally. The game's over, and then I got to worry to win the bet on top of that who's going to be up at the podium with the trophy. To me, it's it, it's like – I already won the bet. I got the right team. Now I have to wait for the media to confirm that. So and 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 again, and then we'll just be done with it. But that's why I would never bet Mahomes at eight to one when the Chiefs are seven, or I would never bet Stroud at thirty-four to one when the Texans are thirty-three. But when you're getting triple the number on a quarterback, it is a it is a it is a significant difference. Okay, it is a significant difference, and that is why it is interesting. But because you two both think that they don't know who Brock Purdy is. And it's they'll give it to the running it back. No, 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 that's why it's that, if, if, if you're we looking would... at icons of the NFL quarterback, if everything is equal, those icons are going to get the nod. There's that's still that, that sort of build up to, well, Brock Purdy, what did he do? He threw three slants the... that went to the distance. You know what I mean? But again, he's based the on rookie everybody the out same, of the group. He's not technically based on the rookie. everything the same. He's the newcomer. He was one went away from winning league MVP. Yeah, you, I understand. I understand that, but you're talking about we're talking Lamar, we're talking Josh Allen, and we're talking about a two-time but he's not Super Bowl. Priced like them, like this but is the most he's bizarre on a, he's on a circle team that, that we've done. Like, it's, huh? it's all again. The 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 argument from my vantage point was if everything is equal. I'm talking statistics identical across the board. For me, Brock Purdy would get left out of the MVP conversation if you compared it to the other quarterbacks. That's all. Like, if, if they announce, like, if everything is even, they go, oh, McCaffrey got it. Like, you know, that's a pretty good choice. If they're like, oh, Isaiah Pacheco got it. Like, whoa, whoa. Mahomes had good stats in that game. What happened? Like, you would get the argument from me at that point. The, we'll, we'll leave it there. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we can just do this for, 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 for hours on and hours on end. Most receiving touchdowns, Jake Ferguson's the favorite at plus 210. I continue mm. to find that completely fascinating. Most rushing touchdowns, Aaron Jones is the favorite at plus 115. They're the biggest dog of the weekend. Most passing touchdowns, Brock Purdy's the favorite. He hasn't played a game yet. <laughs> these markets, you can tell due to a big reason why these markets are so out of whack right now is actually just Dallas being eliminated because Dallas was the favorite in so many of these markets. Dak was the favorite in every quarterback market. CD was the favorite in every receiving market. And Pollard had a lot of respect in the rushing markets there. Of the postseason leaders right now, Joe, are any of these options intriguing to you? Well, I look, I take a different approach in regards to the passing touchdowns, and I understand the, it's the mindset that Purdy's going to be there, right? But, and we talk about it, but it, they do have a balanced offense where Christian McCaffrey can take over, and maybe Brock Purdy isn't as dominant in these next two games should they win the NFC Championship. I would look to Jared Goff, or if you believe Baker can do it, 
I would look to Baker as a long shot. The reason why I say that is I'm on the over tomorrow in regards to that ball game. I think that ball game could absolutely explode where we see 55 to potential 60 points in that matchup. It wouldn't shock me if either quarterback in that ball game has maybe four touchdown passes. Either one of them, maybe both. Yeah. So that's where I would look. And then again, I got to go to my guy, Jordan Love. I mean, we're talking about a quarterback since November has averaged 270 passing yards per game. If it's a dry track tonight and he steps up like I think he can and puts up numbers, then I like Jordan Love as a dark horse in regards to that. Yeah, two for me in this uh, type of column. Most playoff passing yards of the season. Jared Goff plus 170. He's actually the favorite. You might say, like, oh, well, I'm going to wait for you know Josh Allen to get in the fold or, or whoever that might be. I think they're going to win this football game, which means I'm going to get three games, and if I think they're going to play the 49ers, I think they're going to lose the 49ers, and I think Goff's going to have to throw 40-plus times in that game. So he might get those three games in where Brock Purdy gets his three games in, but I already have the nod of having a pretty good start here out of Jared Goff, and I think he's going to have a very good game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, to get back in that market of the playoff touchdown catches here, which again, Ferguson with three is the leader in the clubhouse. The guy I think you could catch him, also a tight end. It's George Kittle, a 12 to 1 price. If I think the 49ers are going to make the Super Bowl, and I do, that's three football games. Touchdown tonight, touchdown NFC Championship game, maybe a touchdown or two in the Super Bowl to get over there and get that fourth. I think a 12 to 1 price here on George Kittle makes some sense, and you might need a good starting spot tonight. The playoff rushing touchdown market is so interesting with Jones at plus 115 right now. His anytime touchdown score is actually around the same number of course he could very well catch one um but that has not been a big part of his game but i've actually like for me the primary breakdown of this market is do you believe aaron jones scores a rushing touchdown in this game today Mm. and i did land on no the niners have given up double the passing touchdowns compared to the rushing touchdowns that they've allowed aaron jones had two rushing touchdowns in the regular season yep should have three in the game against dallas law of averages would probably suggest he's done enough it makes CMC interesting at four to one, but the two Lions backs are very interesting. Montgomery six fifty and and Gibbs is ten to one. Look, obviously being booked as the favorite in their game is a big help, but also those two running backs have combined for seventeen rushing touchdowns over their last ten games postseason included. So can you get one of them to get both touchdowns in the game against Tampa Bay? And again, just grab a portion of this lead here. Without even needing to advance, Monty 650, Gibbs at 10 to 1, I thought was really interesting. Yeah, I like Gibbs too. I mean, his dual threat capability in terms of the receiving yards yeah. is going to be critical in terms of this ball game tomorrow afternoon. That's a good look in, in regards to that. I think, you know, if we're talking Baltimore, if they do get through this game receiving yards, I mean, look at their wide receivers, Zay Flowers and OBJ. I think, you know, if we expect Lamar to have success against this secondary, that's another area where, they're, if they're going to have an extra game, keep an eye out for both of those players. How about Gus Edwards, 26-1 to 1 to lead the playoffs here with rushing touchdowns. He gets underway today. You get one right off the cap. I think they're going to the Super Bowl, so that's three games here. A good chance to get that. And also, to be fair, I mean, Josh Allen at 750 has to be worth some yes. consideration with his yeah. 15 rushing touchdowns in the regular season. Odds in motion next right here on Sportsbook. Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some dog prices. We're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Kev. Go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now, he's a little bit more over money, but it's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby. The money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. The Bostonian versus the book. This is one of the hardest jobs in all of football. You are replacing Bear Bryant, 
You are replacing Nick Saban. You are replacing guys who won national championships and they still wanted them out. They still Mike, wanted them gone. Mike Shula. You, you Mike Shula was him? a disaster. Dubos was a disaster. Gene Stallings. That's what I mean. They, they ran him out. He won a national championship and they ran Gene Stallings out. The Bostonian versus the book. Good move by the Clippers. And obviously, folks, they have Tyron Lue, who I think is one of the best coaches in the league. And I'll say this right now, folks. The way they're playing, I know Minnesota's in first. I know Oklahoma City's been great. I know Denver's been fantastic. But the team I'm thinking right now that could actually come out of the West, if they stay healthy and he keeps playing like that, it's Kawhi Leonard and the Clippers. Betting above the rim, only on Sports Grid. Last year, the Purdue Boilermakers upset by the 16 seed Fairleigh Dickinson. Is history going to repeat itself? Purdue is capable of winning six games in the NCAA tournament, but the fact is, until Purdue proves that it's capable of not just advancing, but advancing far in the bracket in March, this is going to be the storyline, and I've said that to you throughout the offseason. The early line, only on Sports Grid. I am not a Cowboys fan. I did not have a Cowboys ticket on this game. I bet the over, but I was, I'm frustrated watching this game. I'm frustrated seeing the Dallas Cowboys think that this is their optimal game plan. In game live, prime time, only on Sports Grid. Sports Grid, the only streaming sports betting network. Tips, info, and insights to up your IQ. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Pro Football Today, divisional round action coming up shortly here. Quick little segment before we get you into an exciting, action-packed hour number three. Down your right side, Joe Lisi, Kevin Walsh. We are going to bring that house down, getting you all the plays you need. But you know where else you can go as well to get that? On the Sports Grid app, the single best app in the sports industry to get you set up perfectly for games like divisional round action in the NFL. Download it where apps are available, the single best place to find all of that information. But let's get to a little odds in motion this week. We're not going to wait long. It's game number one. It's from the Charm City in Baltimore. Weather conditions, brisk and chilly. 20 degrees of kickoff, expected winds of 10 to 15 miles an hour. Number one overall seed, the Baltimore Ravens taking on the upstarts, Houston Texans from the AFC South. And by the way, you can call them upstarts you all want. But you take a look at that final game that they won with C.J. Stroud in the Dome in Indianapolis. Fantastic stuff. And they blew away the Cleveland Browns, which many people thought would be able to do some damage. But you do have the number one overall pick here in Lamar, excuse me, the number one seed, Lamar Jackson, with a back-to-back -back MVP on the line. He's got a lot of pressure to deal with. But those odds actually started out here as an eight and a half as the opening number. Throughout the week, we've seen that risen to a nine and a half. Let's see by game time if we can possibly touch tens. That's a lot of expectations here on the Baltimore Ravens and absolutely rightfully so even if we take a look at the total perspective here guys early in the week 45 and a halfs were out there that's now down to 43 and a halfs as I said there are some weather conditions that we're going to have to worry about in Baltimore and let's see if that dome team the Houston Texans can go outdoors here with CJ Stroud a rookie quarterback and take down the number one overall seed with Lamar Jackson at quarterback should be interesting to watch it play out so if we're looking once again at that odds flow here you're looking at that late money possibility coming in here on those Ravens. If it pushes it to 10, do we see people jump back in and force it back to 9.5? It'll be a lot of fun to watch it play out. But I think we can agree. If we're talking about two quarterbacks really getting after it, C.J. Stroud and Lamar Jackson, this one should be an all-timer. And it gets us started on divisional round action right away with the first game of this weekend. An action-packed hour number three coming up next right here on Pro Football Today on the Sports Grid Network. We'll see you in just a few moments. <laughs> 